Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we are in Ezekiel chapter 24, verse 1, as we go through the Bible here for the fourth time in the last 35 years. Ezekiel 24, verse 1. Get your Bible, if it's possible. Remember, you can study all four of those series, all four, verse by verse, the entire Bible, at your pace, at your convenience, simply by choosing, clicking, and listening. All you need to bring is your Bible to the Bible, versebyverse.com. <clears throat> and Lord, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, It is January, 588 B.C. God speaks to Ezekiel once again. Son of man, write down the name of of the day, this very day, the king of Babylon started his siege against Jerusalem this very day, and utter a parable to the rebellious house and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Put on a pot, set it on, and also pour water into it. Gather pieces of meat in it, every good piece, the thigh and the shoulder. Fill it with choice cuts. Take the choice of the flock. Also pile fuel bones under it. Make it boil well. And let the cuts simmer in it. Therefore, says the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city, to the pot whose scum is in it, and whose scum is not gone from it. Bring it out piece by piece, on which no lot has fallen, for her blood is in her midst. She set it on top of a rock. She did not pour it on the ground to cover it with dust that it may raise up fury and take vengeance. I have set her blood on top of a rock, that it may not be covered. In other words, Jerusalem sinned, and her sin was blatant. She didn't attempt to hide it. She didn't attempt to cover it. Of course, it was wide open to God. Consequently, her punishment from God will be very open and public as well. 9. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city! I too will make the pyre great. Heap on the wood, kindle the fire, cook the meat well, mix in the spices, and let the cuts be burned up. In other words, judgment that judgment, which has already begun, is going to be very severe. And of course, this isn't anything new that Ezekiel is talking about. He's been talking about, talking about it since the beginning of this book. But nevertheless, the people will hear it again. Maybe, just maybe, this judgment from God and the reason for it will sink into the heads of some few people who hear. And even though it may not save their life, it may save their soul from hell. 11. Then set the pot empty on the coals, that it may become hot, and its bronze may burn that its filthiness may be melted into it, that its scum may be consumed. 
She has grown weary with lies, and her great scum has not gone from her. Let her scum be in the fire. Notice what God thought of her sin, and for that matter, all sin. To God, sin, any sin, is scum. Jerusalem chose to believe lies instead of the word of God because she loved her sin. She loved her sin, so she hated the word of God. She said, I don't believe it. Hmm. She didn't want to hear the word of God. She only wanted to hear pleasant things while she lived in sin. Just tell me pleasant things. She wanted to hear pleasant things that justified her sin. Well, she heard them over and over again. She listened to that for a long time because there were many false teachers, watered down truth pastors and preachers who gave her exactly what she wanted and she loved it. What they didn't say was that she was going to pay for it because of course that would be too negative and she wouldn't give her offerings, you know. And people would stop coming and listening to that feel-good preacher. So the lies that she loved so much are now destroying her, ruining her life. And she's got it coming and more. God continues through Ezekiel, the faithful prophet, verse 13. In your filthiness <coughs> is lewdness because I have cleansed you. And you were not cleansed. You will not be cleansed of your filthiness anymore till I have caused my fury to rest upon you. If filthiness, that is sin, is not purged by repentance and confession and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, if it's not purged in that way, then it will be purged by God and his holy wrath when he sends you to hell. But it will be purged. The thing is, you're never getting out of hell because it's going to take forever and ever and ever. 14. <clears throat> I, the Lord, have spoken it. It shall come to pass, and I will do it. I will not hold back, nor will I spare, nor will I relent. According to your ways and according to your deeds, they will judge you, says the Lord God. It was now too late to repent. It was now too late to save the nation. They push God too far. They push their sin too far. And now they will pay. They were warned all the way through the entire process of their sin from before they began sinning. And through their sin, they were warned time and time again by God. They continued to ignore all those warnings. Now it's too late. 15. Also the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from you the desire of your eyes with one stroke. Yet you shall neither mourn nor weep, nor shall your tears run down. Sigh in silence. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind your turban on your head and put your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your lips. Do not eat man's bread of sorrow. And he is talking to Ezekiel here. Ezekiel's wife is going to die. And God's going to allow it. It is in his plan. And he will use it to be assigned to the Hebrews who had been exiled to Babylon. God is saying, Ezekiel, your wife is going to die. But you cannot mourn. Ezekiel cannot show any of the normal signs of mourning. Which is what the things in verse 17 were. God says, don't you do it. 
18. So I spoke to the people in the morning. And that evening my wife died. And uh, the next morning I did as I was commanded. And the people said to me, Will you not tell us what these things signify to us, that you behave so? The people knew what happened. They knew that Ezekiel's beloved wife died. And they couldn't understand why Ezekiel wasn't mourning because she meant so much to him. But they figured they knew Ezekiel and they figured it meant something. How he was behaving, they thought had some sort of prophetic meaning because it was so unusual and because, of course, it would be in keeping with Ezekiel's sometimes unexplainable and prophetic behavior from the past. 20. Then I answered them. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Speak to the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, your arrogant boast, the desire of your eyes, the delight of your soul, and your sons and daughters whom you left behind shall fall by the sword. In verse 22, And you shall do as I have done. You shall not cover your lips, nor eat man's bread of sorrow. In other words, Ezekiel says, You shall not mourn when all this horrible judgment of God comes upon you, and you are suffering just as I am suffering with the loss of my wife. He continues in 23, Your turbans shall be on your heads, your sandals on your feet. You shall neither mourn nor weep, but you shall pine away in your iniquities and mourn with one another. The exiles were not to grieve over the destruction of Jerusalem because it was the righteous wrath of God in action because of her many sins, which she did not repent of. 24. Thus Ezekiel is assigned to you. According to all that he has done, you shall do. And when this comes, you shall know that I am the Lord God. And you, son of man, will it not be in the day when I take from them their stronghold, their joy, and their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that on which they set their minds, their sons and their daughters. The holy temple <clears throat> was their strength because it represented God in their midst. But since Israel had forsaken God, God doesn't play stupid games. He will cause that that temple will be destroyed. All of it was just a hollow shell anyway without God. So now the symbol will be taken away as well. You're not going to play stupid games and pretend that everything's fine. Well, you got the temple, you know, everything's cool. No. They walked away from God. God walked away from them. And then he will have his temple destroyed. They don't want anything to do with him and the pure worship of God. So he's taken away even the opportunity. He's not going to play games and pretend that it's okay when it's not. And he's not going to allow them to pretend either. By continuing to go to that temple, they will be, they will be exiled to Babylon and the temple will be destroyed. 26. That on that day, one who escapes will come to you to let you hear it with your ears. On that day... Your mouth will be open to him who has escaped. You shall speak and no longer be mute. Thus you will be assigned to them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So after Ezekiel announced the doom of Jerusalem, he uh, would say nothing else until the messenger arrived from Jerusalem, announcing that the city had indeed been destroyed according to the word of God. You might as well just cling to the word of God, like it or not, because it's going to be 
coming to pass. Everything that it says will happen, will happen. And everything that it says is true, is true. Remember, you can study that whole Word of God, which is the most important thing you do, you could ever do. Study the whole counsel of God, every one of the 31,000 plus verses in the English Bible four times at the thebibleversebyverse.com. You can't do anything in this world that's more important than study the whole counsel of God and get the complete picture of what God has said. And you'll never be led astray if you study the entire counsel of God. And your faith will increase. And your appreciation for, for God will increase. So do it. Check it out. Do it. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me. And praying for God's word. And when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give us the Lord may lead. We'll do Ezekiel chapter 25 next time. Until then, so long, everyone. <laughs>